engines that accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere and into various orbits in space. Now, the first stage supporting today's mission is no stranger to space travel and is flying for its 14th time, having previously supported GPS-3, Space Vehicle 4 and 5, Inspiration 4, Axiom 1, Nilesat 301, OneWeb Launch 17, and seven Starlink missions. For today's launch, we will be attempting to recover the booster using our drone ship Just Read the Instructions, which is currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. Now with liftoff currently set at 1.22 a.m. Eastern Time, here are a few words from the President and CEO of Arabsat. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings and welcome to the Arabsat Badr 8 satellite launch. I'm thrilled to be here today to celebrate this momentous occasion with all of you. I'd like to express my gratitude to Airbus, our satellite manufacturer, for providing us with the latest technology and expertise, and for our standing relationship that has spanned over 25 years. Their contribution has been crucial to the success of this project, and we couldn't have done it without them. I would like to thank SpaceX for their valuable contribution to this project. Their expertise and launch services has been instrumental in bringing the Better 8 satellite to its uh, designated orbit today. And we are honored to have them as our partners. The Better 8 satellite is a state-of-the-art uh, addition to Arabsat orbital position 26 degrees east. It offers a wide range of services for satellite communications, television broadcasting, and information exchange in C and KU frequency bands. Better 8 will be joining our Better Satellite Network at Arabsat 26 East hotspot and bringing advanced technologies and extended coverage with multiple bands to enable broadcasting partners to get their content to their audience in MENA, Central Asia, and North and West Africa effectively. This new satellite enhances our capabilities and capacities to meet the modern and advanced solutions our customers expect. And we are excited about the opportunities that it will bring. Our leading role in the Middle East and North Africa regions for satellite broadcasting and communications will also be strengthened. The launch is one of Arabsat's most strategic projects, making significant milestones for our organization and the Arab world. This launch is one of Arabsat's most strategic projects, making a significant milestone for our organization and the Arab world. We are proud of our achievements and we look forward to continuing to provide innovative and reliable satellite solutions to our customers. Thank you for joining us to this journey and we are excited about what the future holds for Arabsat and our partners. Today's launch actually marks SpaceX's 125th launch from the pad you see on your screen. Located Stage one, fuel load complete. Located at the north end of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, Space Launch Complex 40, also referred to as Slick 40, previously supported Titan launches by the U.S. Air Force between 1965 to 2005. The launch complex was then leased to SpaceX in 2007, and since then, we've had 189 total launches from Florida, with 124 of those launches lifting off from Pad 40. And Slick 40 is indeed home to a handful of SpaceX firsts. From this pad, we've seen the first flight of Falcon 9 and Dragon, the initial COTS, or Commercial Orbital Transportation service, Services flights that began in December 2010, the beginning of the Commercial Resupply Services, or CRS flights, with CRS-1 having flown in October 2012, and even the first flights of the landing legs and grid fins all happened from Space Launch Complex 40 in December of 2015. Now, 124 missions later, and riding on the coattails of the most recent Axiom-2 mission that launched just a few days ago, SpaceX is planning on building a crew tower at Slick 40 to be able to launch future crew and cargo from this pad in addition to 39A. And this will bring us one step closer to making humanity multi-planetary. Now at T minus five minutes until liftoff, we should be seeing the transporter erector clamp arms beginning to open from beneath the fairing. Now we should see that in about 40 seconds from now. When the clamp arms fully open. Pressurizing for a strong back retract. 
When the clamp arms fully open beneath the fairing, the TE or transporter erector will begin to pull away from the rocket slightly. The transporter erector is the truss structure next to the rocket that is used for rollout and to route propellants and electrical power to the vehicle in preparation for launch. And at T0, ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. So watch on your screen for those clamp arms that will open just below the payload fairing there. And there you can see those clamp arms opening. Now the first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the transporter erector, but the structure is hinged and will retract away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. Now while uh, you may hear it referred to as the strong back from the launch team, uh, but transporter erector uh, is also used to refer to uh, this structure. So we should be seeing that strong back beginning to recline here momentarily. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both first stage and second stage should finish loading propellant about hold, a minute. Hold, hold. Launch board is running. And as you may have heard, there was a hold called out over the nets. Give us a few moments and we're going to check in with the team, listen in on the nets and see if we can get some additional information to share with you. As I mentioned earlier, weather was a launch item for today's launch, and we are going to be standing down. Uh, the vehicle and payload remain in good health, so please check our social media accounts for our next launch opportunity. And as always, thank you for watching, and we hope to see everyone back here for our next attempt.